uniting communities throughout the six. This is Urban Definition with your hosts, Sassin, Kareem, and Zane on CHHA 1610. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Urban Definition. As per usual, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Zane Jinna. Hey, everybody. And Mr. Sassin Mirzai. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? How's your week been? Oh, man, it's been a very, uh... You know what? I won't lie, man. I'm, I'm really frustrated this week. I've been playing Pokemon Go, and I can't catch anything. I, I don't know how to comment on that. I can't. I cause... can't get any good Pokemon, man. I'm <laughs> stuck. I'm stuck on bad levels. I got very little data. I'm mad. This is because he joined Team Mistake. Honestly, he should have joined Valor. Oh, like <laughs> he went there. He actually said it in the most appropriate way possible. So for those of you who don't know and don't really kind of understand this whole Pokemon Go business, Pokemon Go was released how many weeks ago now, Sasson? Two weeks. Two weeks ago, but formally was introduced into Canada this past week? Yeah. It was on Sunday. No, Sunday, yes. I think it was and Sunday. And because he is our tech guy, I will allow Sasson to explain the premise of Pokemon Go. Because there's a lot of people who still don't understand what Pokemon Go is, including my bosses. So please, explain to the world and CHHA and Urban Definition <laughs> and all of UD Nation what Pokemon Go is, please. Okay, I'll keep this short. You go around, you catch Pokemon. There's 151 right now, excluding the legendaries. And once you have enough Pokemon... You can take on gyms of your strongest ones, claim the gym to get free money every day, and then later on there will be trading and battling amongst players. That was like the worst explanation Why? of what the, people. That's, that's like everything. Sasson's explanation was for somebody who already understands this whole Pokemon thing. So, kind of rewinding here, Pokemon is a cartoon that was created in the 90s, and the premise is there's a number of different animals called Pokemon throughout the world. Pocket and monsters. Pocket monsters. <laughs> and you have to go around, and you have, you know, Pokeballs that are these little, you know, fictional um, containments that you throw at Pokemon and catch Pokemon. And basically, now they've created a video game that you use on your cell phone to do just that. Go out into the real world and catch Pokemon or pocket monsters. <laughs> So And it's addicting. It's so addicting. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm up late at night. I don't have any data anyways, but I'm, like, standing around my house. I'm, like, let, like, a really rare Pokemon just come into my house somehow, and I catch it, and I go to bed. I honestly hate when that happens. My friend woke up in the middle of the night, and he was in his boxers, and he found a Jigglypuff in his bed. So he had to run down the street looking for this thing, and he actually caught it. No, we're not doing this. We're not. Ter we're not starting the show off with. Po let's, let's be honest. If we did this, we could talk this entire hour about Pokemon. I know. We, we need to stop. But we need to start with my number one question: What is going on in the world? Well, there's a lot of things going on in the world, guys. Uh, for one, there's been a, a recent article in Now that was saying about that was talking about rage and racism on the TTC, and that was very interesting, given you know a lot of. Uh, Given the history or the context of what's been happening with the political climate of the past few weeks with Brexit and the, uh, the, the elections in the U.S., and it's really sad to see the same kind of effects happening here at home. And having read this article, I was like, oh, my goodness, why? Why are they doing this? And it's some seriously bad stories. There's a story about um, – oh, man. I gotta look at my notes. Kareem, do you have any? A young gentleman, a young black gentleman who was on the bus and an incident occurred and basically, essentially all hell broke loose on this bus. The black kid was basically trying to calm everybody down and a lady was just super upset and pulled out a can of mace and just sprayed the kid in the face. And it's weird because rather than calling this a racial issue, what they're saying is that, you know, all this anger is is, I guess, central, it kind of revolves around the whole TTC lack of service and people being frustrated to have to wait. And, you know, it's not a matter of people being racist. It's a matter of people getting upset. And because they're so upset and because they're so frustrated with the TTC service, the bad side of everybody is starting to come out, which I think is ridiculous to begin with. I don't know if I accept that explanation, though. I mean, I, I understand it, but... 
could it be that bad that you have to start fights on subways and streetcars and buses and th things like that? To be honest, and I'm so Assassin's gonna be like, why did you do this? But I would have expected this to be an issue with Pokemon Go, not TTC service. <laughs> yeah, but that actually makes sense, right? Like you, you pour your emotions into this game, but onto a subway ride, it's a bit ridiculous and it's sad. So, Torontonians, please. Calm down. I know. I know. It's the summer. Everybody's trying to get to places. Everybody's trying to get to Harbor Front right now. But please, just calm down. Be nice to one another for once. Seriously, guys. Just what is this? It. It madness is what it is. It's just madness. What else is going on? I heard. I read today actually that Kathleen Wynne wants to start a conversation about legalizing marijuana. She would want to start a conversation about legalizing marijuana. This is the same lady who showed up to. Um, when to announce that the lick bow is uh, like liquor is now being sold in grocery stores, and I think she showed up visibly drunk to that. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, so this would be the same lady who now wants. To, hey guys, um, let's let's have a conversation about legalizing pot now. Well, the idea is that you know it comes after uh, Justin Trudeau wants Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, I should say, wants to end the prohibition of marijuana at least for that. So decriminalizing at at the least, right? Right. And so now she wants to talk to other provincial leaders and other leaders in the community and say, hey, you know, what what could be done about legalizing it? And talk to medical experts, health experts, uh, people who have to use it for, for those kinds of purposes just to see, you know, let's can we reduce the stigma and then perhaps legalize it one day? And I think it's not the worst idea. I mean, you could definitely generate revenue there. And if Ontario wants to to get into that, then why not, right? I mean, she has that experiment, as you said, with, uh, selling liquor out of out of grocery stores. She also has experience destroying the educational system, but that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to touch upon that right no, now. No, we're not. But basically, my whole vendetta with that is that she essentially made it... She took out... It used to be mandatory for you to memorize the, 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 the time, your times tables. I think it was up until 12 times 12. Yeah. She's the one who took that out of the uh, curriculum and just said, let's push uh, more English. What? <laughs> Yeah, I know a lot of educators who are very frustrated by her, and um, this is just another layer being added to people's frustration. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea to make to remove the multiplication table. Well, um, yeah, like I said, that's a whole other topic of conversation <laughs> that we're going to have maybe another time, but just not today. Fair enough. Uh, you guys hear about the baby that was left in the car at Costco? No. I did. This baby was it was like three months old. Yeah, it was under a year old. That's insane. So basically, and to help, and we're we're not gonna name, we're not gonna say where, but basically, a uh, parents, two parents, left their baby in the car. They went into Costco, and this baby is like three months old. People saw the baby. People started freaking out. I don't know if anybody crashed the window, but the police the cops did. Oh, the police, the cops. Okay, yeah. yeah. So basically, I think. A few minutes after, you know, the cops were called, the cops showed up. The parents did show up, but I think they were arrested and charged. They were charged, and, you know, this whole thing brings you back, brings us back to the conversation, actually, um, because we did talk about, remember the toddler, I think it was a toddler, he went into the gorilla cage at yes. a zoo? Harambe! Yes, that's it. Harambe's so, the gorilla. Har yeah. Uh, for those of you who didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it brings back to the conversation of, you know, is that good parenting and who's to blame for this? I mean, in this case, it's clearly the parent's fault. But, you know, and I was reading a comment one day. I don't know where it was now. But basically, for Harambe, one, one comment was from another mother who said, you know, I totally understand. Like, sometimes you're, ju you're just so stressed. You forget your kid and all that. Um, but that was at a zoo. It's a public space. Fine. You want the kid to explore a little bit. This was a car with an under an with the with an infant under a year old and that's really concerning because it's like what were the parents thinking you oh, a, that baby will be okay it's a very hot day you're gonna leave your baby in the car for and that's dangerous on so many levels of course as we know and very irresponsible at that and it's costco it's not like a convenience store where you go in and come out in a second yeah, that's true all those free samples that takes up time yeah exactly so i don't know man it's really it's really sad to see that these things are happening right now. This might be a weird take on this whole situation, but I'm kind of glad to hear that this happened because many a, ca many a case do I hear about this happening with somebody's dog or animal. Yeah, in Vaughn last week when I went, they actually had security guards 
monitoring every car that gets in, asking us if we had dogs, and if we did, they made us like leave Vaughn Mills. But see, the thing is, I'm happy that this happened because there's so much emphasis on people leaving their dogs and everybody caring so much about animals that it's nice to see that there is the human component of it where people are, you know, they saw a baby and they acted on it. It wasn't just, oh my gosh, another dog. It was, holy crap, there's a baby in there. We need to do something right now. Not, oh my God, there's another dog. We need to break the window so that the dog can breathe. <laughs> Not that I'm saying I love my dog and if I would never leave my dog in anything like that. But, I mean, it's just nice to see that there's a human component to it now and then. Faith in humanity restored a little bit. Yeah, because I, I know a lot of people who have left their kids in the car, and then maybe not less than a year old. We're talking like maybe like four or five years old. I know my mother used to leave me in the car, not when I was a baby, but, you know, when I was a little bit younger. To say, like, you know, wait here, I'm going in, and I'll be back. So it's nice to see that people are striving to step up and stand up for the kids, no, not just definitely. animals. Definitely. That's very good for them, too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's true. But for me, it was the human component that I was like, Yay! <laughs> What's Hi. going on with you guys this week? Me this week? Yeah. Honestly, Pokemon taking up my life. And, okay, I would just like to mention, I started like a week and a half. I say two weeks. Sasson says one week. So we're, we're calling it week and a half. And oh, I am yeah. already... I started on the Tuesday. You started on the Friday. No way. You started before me. Or you were... You've been hounding me to get the app for like over a week. No, no, no. I got it the first week to reserve my username. But that was it. After nah, that, that's I excuses. That's excuses right there. No, but you knew that, and the if servers you, were down that day. If you had the app, my thing, you downloaded the app, you had the app, you should have been using that app. Oh, no, I deleted it immediately. Okay, either way, the whole people thing, got banned. the whole argument here, and my whole proud moment here oh, is that God. I started a week after you then, and well, it still... it wasn't a week, it was like four days. Doesn't matter, and I'm still... Now, I'm only one level behind him, <laughs> and chances are, as of tomorrow, I will be ahead of Sasson. He sits on a gym. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not my problem. I can't even compete. Like, this conversation is... I have no place in it now. <laughs> I know. Uh, Sass and I were having a conversation a couple days ago about, um, like, the whole Pokemon thing, and Zane's like, I caught a haunter. <laughs> and we were... I, was, I, didn't know, I, didn't, I didn't know what to say, because I didn't want to make fun of him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Assassin and I are just like, so, um, yeah, how are you leveling up your Gengar? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there, guys. I'll get there. Oh, my gosh. I just got to call I'm just glad. First and get some more data. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Kareem's on Team Valor and he's catching up because if it was Zane catching up and he's Mystic, no, I can't, I can't do that. I know. At least Assassin and I are on the same team. <laughs> we need to get that Mewtwo together. So if you have anything to say or input on any of the topics during today's What's Going On in the World, please chime in. Zane, how can they chime in? Go to Facebook at facebook.com slash urban definition or tweet at us at at urban def radio and let us know your thoughts, questions, concerns, anything that you want to do to be part of the conversation. Real talk. If you would also like to know, if we would like to know what your, you know, Pokemon Go status is, let us know. Coming, bu coming up after the break, guys, we got real talk. So stay tuned. We'll be back, guys, after the break. This is Urban Definition. Great intro to our next segment. Welcome back, guys. This is Urban Definition. And for those of us now tuning in, this is the part of the show where, that we like to call Real Talk. Every week, we have a new topic that we discuss. And as you heard by the late Mr. James Brown, this is a man's world. But is it really? Today's topic of conversation is gender roles. And to begin, I'd like to pose the question... Do we live in an equal opportunity society? Zane, what based, do you think? Based on gender alone? Based on gender alone. So we'll, we'll, we'll delve into this as, as we continue. But the very first question is, do we live in an equal opportunity society? Nope, not at all. Sass? I used to think so until my girlfriend would always come, like, tell me stories after work about how people wouldn't believe her on her tech knowledge. Like, they'd always ask for a man at the store, and that's just like, what the heck? 
It's really rude, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's really rude, and it's disgusting to think that, oh, just because you're a girl doesn't mean means you don't know anything. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Why well, think like that? But I think our generation, once our generation like becomes the main generation, then everything will be solved. Do you think so? Because, I mean, I know even a lot of people that we went to school with, right? Yeah. We had a very... We had 100 kids in our program. But our school was a majority of, like, 70% women. But hold on, hold on. I'm, getting, I'm going somewhere with this. Of the split, okay, let's say it was 70%, 30%. Yeah. Of that percentage, there was a... I would Maybe I'd say a small fraction of the 70% that would consider themselves sports fans. And they were really adamant about wanting to pursue a career in sports journalism. Mm-hmm. And... I don't think a lot of people were up up front about it, but I think there was a lot. There was a stigma that, or an unspoken stigma that, oh, well, what, what what does she know about sports? She's a girl, and let's be honest, a lot of the girls that we went to school with that were pursuing sports journalism yeah. know a heck of a lot more about sports than a lot of the guys in our program. Yeah, no doubt. I remember that. Yeah, because I mean, we we did we did a course called sports journalism together in RTA. And I think of that class, I think vast majority were females. I think they were. And they knew a lot about everything. Like, they were talking about, I mean, at the time it was the NHL lockout, but, like, even other sports, football, They were soccer, extremely versed in their knowledge. Yeah, I, this is coming from a guy who knows nothing about much more than even a fraction of basketball. And what was weird was that, with that being said, still, a lot of people would look to the guys for, for thoughts and insight before the females well that i think over that course in particular the discourse changed and it was more the like you could see the prof then going to the girls and be like okay well what do you know about this because they were the ones chiming in about everything that's true so with that being said i mean at post grad we have a lot of kids that we are students that we went to school with females who are now they do have the positions i mean i know a girl laura spratt she's she's doing work with the toronto blue jays right now doing big things shout out to her but my question the next question i get i have is this when they are given the opportunity are females held to a higher standard than males okay so is there a double standard then sure yeah let's let's go with the double standard to- the whole double standard topic it would be hard for me to answer that because i'm not a female mm-hmm. so i don't know the pressures that women face out at a workplace i don't know uh the kind of expectations they're held at or how they would perform really like I don't, there's no i'm not saying that there's a general way that women perform i think from the women i've worked with there's more detail orientation mm-hmm. so that, well, that's obviously a very nece- uh, necessary skill and very required. Um, but I don't know if, like, I, it's very hard. It would be, it's not my place to say. How about that? It's not my place to say that there is one because I actually don't know. None of us know. Okay. So, Sasson's looking at me like, man, I can't talk about no work. I ain't got a job. <laughs> oh, Sasson. Oh, what? Man. But... The reason that, um, well, this conversation and this topic was chosen for this week is because this past weekend, the, re- the reboot, well, actually, at this point, I think, I, having seen the movie myself, I think it's, it really is a standalone film. But the female Ghostbusters, which shouldn't really be called the female Ghostbusters, it should really just be called Ghostbusters. But really and truly, that's what people are calling it. The female Ghostbusters came out, which is essentially a reboot of the 80s, 90s. Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2 came out. And there's been a lot of criticism about the fact that they did choose an all-female cast. But, I mean, I don't. have you guys seen it yet? I haven't seen it, but I've been planning to. Well, it is an absolutely dope movie. It's really good. Um, but one of the females, um, Leslie Jones, who is also a... Um, I guess a, I wouldn't call her a star, but she's a um, cast member, a cast member uh, on SNL, um, received a lot of backlash. Um, not necessarily for just Ghostbusters, but in general. So when the movie was released, there was somebody hacked onto Twitter, not her account, but created a new account under her name mm-hmm. and started basically sending out racial tweets, um, comparing Leslie Jones to a monkey. And basically, people were just hating on her and well i mean more so her than the rest of the cast but essentially they were hating on the cast because 
they didn't like the fact that it was a female Ghostbusters, and they felt that it had to be an all male um, cast in order to truly be um, a reboot and pay homage to the original, which that, is garbage to begin with. That is that is absolutely despicable. It That's is sickening. despicable. That's well, cr- like why? Why would they do that? Because I don't understand what's wrong with having an all female cast in a Ghostbusters film. It's not like the originals were that great anyway. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're talking to somebody who is a huge Ghostbusters fan. All right, you can fine. put duct tape over your mouth for the rest of the show. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. What aren't you a fan of? Every time we bring something up, you're like, I'm a, the all-time fan of this thing. I love Ghostbusters. Anything that's and from the 80s and fault. 90s in particular, right, Sash? No, and comics and sports. It's He's not my fan that everything. the scripts are written to, 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 to manage a lot of the stuff that I happen to love. Oh, my God. Kareem's a fan of everything and anything that you can no, name. No, I am not a fan fan of a lot i don't like pop tarts he loves them <laughs> i had a deadpool IBM computers fan. he loves them I, i'm not a deadpool fan i'm not a dell fan Dead, <laughs> dell and deadpool i'll pass no you're saying you're not a deadpool fan because there's so many deadpool fans but you saw the film in theaters seven times that's because i'm a marvel fan that doesn't make any oh sense my co- all right anyway i like marvel i like colossus I'm a, I like Colossus a lot. Oh my god! It's not my fan. It's not my. Fa- it's not my fan. It's not my fault that I happen to like a lot of stuff. Okay, well, going back to this <laughs> now. I know. Um, so I, you know what? Back to your your uh, double standard question. Mm-hmm. I would think so, actually. I would think so primarily because your affirmative action makes you hire someone of uh, a different race or a different color and stuff like that. So you do automatically hold someone to a different standard of their performance versus what you would have otherwise employed. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So naturally you're looking for flaws and faults and then saying, oh, well, it's because of this, this, and that, as opposed to saying, you know, maybe the person as a person is just either not trained enough because they're new or they're not as as experienced and things like that. But, Mm -hmm. But that's also because there hasn't been opportunity. So... Yeah, there is a double standard, and it's not fair all the time. Maybe in some cases it's a little bit more lenient to those with less experience, provided, of course, that they don't have the – they never had the means before. But not – I don't think that's always the case, and I think a lot of the time you see um, a certain a certain demographic within a workplace, you expect them to be a lot better than others. Mm-hmm. That's so I, true. I still do – I do think that there is a double standard there. But coming back to the whole Ghostbusters thing and the whole thing of people saying, oh, well, you know, females and da 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 I can give you my take. But Norman Wilmer from, the, uh, from Now Magazine, I'm just going to read a little bit of what he wrote here. He said, having the females, it did not destroy my memories of the first movies. In fact, it used those memories to get a couple of laughs, repurposing images, ideas, and even lines of dialogue from both Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. That's smart. It's what J.J. Abrams did in Star Trek in the Star Trek reboot, showing the audience that he respects the original material, even if he's not slavishly dedicated to reproducing it. Which I think is genius because if you guys, when you guys do have a chance to see the movie, it is really and truly a standalone film. It's a lot scarier than the original, but they did a great job at starting from the bottom. And really and truly, after this film, let's get the hate aside. This it does lead so that they can create more of these, and I'd be happy to see more. Yeah, you know what? I do want to see it, and not because it's a female cast, but because having watched the original Ghostbusters, I want to do myself the justice of seeing it. And I think that's the mentality people need to have when they go and see these movies or or whatever remake it is that includes a different cast from what you're used to, because it's about having an open mind. That's true. The last question I have in regards to our Real Talk segment tonight is what's next? We're starting to form into a generation where it's a lot of not just boy-girl. We have transgendered, we have queer, we have all these different communities now forming, you know, what we would call our society. So what next? Because it's no longer going to become a dynamic of female equal opportunities. It's, it's going to start becoming an issue of trans equal opportunities and, yeah, and additional things like that. So... What do you guys think? What's next? I think the doors will open there. I mean, you see it in a series such as Orange is the New Black, where they have Laverne Cox mm-hmm. playing her playing a transgender uh, inmate. So I think slowly, very slowly, that uh, these roles are going to come out. 
I 100% agree with you. And in conclusion to this, I will kind of build on what you just said there with with um, with Miss Cox or Miss Miss Cox. Yeah. Um, in October, she's going to be the lead in Rocky Picture Horror Show, which is coming to f- Fox, even though it's Fox, but still. They're doing a reboot of Rocky Picture Horror Show, and she's going to be the lead, which is pretty dope because in the original, it was a male who was playing a cross-dresser, and this is going to be epic and amazing. But that's it for Real Talk today, guys. We'll be back after this commercial break. Stay tuned. Deuces. I love saying that. Urban, Urban Definition, Definition. on CHHA 1610. This is Urban Definition. Welcome back to Urban Definition, everyone. And it's now time for Kareem's favorite segment of the day. All right, all right. I got a lot of heat from everybody about my terrible, terrible, terrible <laughs> singing ability. So we're going to try this a little bit differently today. So here we go. That's right, guys. It's time for Tech Talk. With Mr. Sass and Mirzai. Mr. Sass and Mirzai, take it away. This is so lame. It sounds like a newsroom xylophone. (laughs) I love how when I first played that for you guys, you guys were like, okay, okay. You're like, it's pretty cool. Kareem made that. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I was expecting you to like do something on top of it, but it was, it was actually just the track. Okay. Hold on. I can't, I can't play it. And like sing over it. I mean, let's let's let, let me, okay. We're gonna we're gonna do this. We're doing this. <laughs> I can't do it. Watch. Here we go. Look. Tech talk. Tech no, 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 talk. No, 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 no. See, it doesn't work. No, it can't, no, I can't no, do it. No, no it doesn't work. Uh-uh, uh-uh. A different song. I thought you like planned this out all week and you were ready. You came in on Wednesday ready to do this new song. Do you remember SpongeBob? Uh, which episode? No, no, just SpongeBob in general. Oh, you know that? Mer- remember the narrator for yeah. SpongeBob? Tom Kenny. That was what I thought about doing. Let's try that. Now is Tech Talk time with Mr. Sassen Mirzai. Sassen, Tech Talk. No, it just sounds like a weird BBC documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you sound really robotic, but now that BBC documentary is hitting me, it makes me feel some type of way. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Okay, but before we run out of time, <laughs> I guess I should start. You should talk tech. Oh my god. So I showed these two, the new Motorola Z phone that's coming out. It is beautiful. Oh my god. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> I don't like you as a person. You know why? Because every two weeks, not even two weeks, every month, you show me why I have to go back in debt. <laughs> Literally, this week, I got out of debt. And now, because Sasson showed me this phone, I'm going to get back in debt. <laughs> I love it, though. Okay, so if you guys don't know, Motorola is the company that took over phone blocks, the the phone that was supposed to be the first modular phone. And they basically took that tech and they made their own phone on the side and it's called the Moto Z. And basically this phone on the back has a magnet and some connectors where you can have different backings. So a bigger battery, a giant JBL speaker, a projector, and more will be coming out later. But the best part is it's not like the LG G5 where you have to shut off the phone and pull out the battery to switch it. This one, you can do it on the fly. So... I, I honestly really want this phone, and I showed these two, and they freaked out as well. Because it's so beautiful. I didn't know a phone like that could exist. <laughs> Zane is actually just freaking out about the projector. Okay, okay, calm down. Yeah, that's that's like, okay, the phone itself, they didn't give any specs on. They just showed the fact that you can remove, like, basically there's a magnetic case on the back, and you can, basically, one case is a battery extension, one is a JBL speaker, and one is a projector, which, I mean, in essence, is better than you know that viral video of the kid flipping the the water bottle what <laughs> what are you, you know the kid about? who at the talent show when he walks in and he basically all he does is flip a bottle and it lands right way up and everybody just goes bananas <laughs> Oh, I saw a different meme of that, of someone, like, walking into, like, a job interview. He's like, what can you do? And the guy just comes in, does that, and leaves, and he's, he's hired. So, yeah, the <laughs> hype that we first saw of this video was more than that. It was it, it maybe equal to that in terms of, the, of the, the initial wow factor. But, I mean, really and truly after that, it didn't really... I mean, there's a lot that still has to be released about this phone. 
But I mean, really, our projector is pretty sick. That is pretty dope. But it's Motorola. It's going to be an Android phone, so it's going to be full Android, just like the Nexus. Right. And it's going to have the top specs. So you're gonna expect it to be the best. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> I'm just, I'm still boggled about the fact you can get like a, a surround, almost surround sound on this thing. <laughs> this <laughs> like guy. There's a lot that happens in technology that just really boggles my mind. Okay, when the fact you... that we have Pokemon Go and Donald Trump running for president at the same time, nothing <laughs> makes sense anymore. Are you Netflixing on your phone or something? Sometimes I do. This guy's already complaining about his limitations of data for Pokemon Go, but he's Netflixing on his phone. Using Wi-Fi. But Pokemon Go doesn't really use that much data, especially if you download Google Maps' as offline maps. Actually, um, since downloading the app from then to now, yeah. I looked at my usage. I'm at 100 gigs for the month. 100? On your phone? Yeah, I could pull it up for you guys afterwards. My data usage? 100 so, gigs? Yeah. You mean megs? No. What? Gigs. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know how I did it. Do you it. have unlimited data? I'm sort of? I that as a no. <laughs> I, love, I love how there was a pause. Uh, sort of? How can he go to 100 gigs? It's unlimited once he pays for it. Oh no, I mean, like, I, I think it's like... You have to check during the break, because that doesn't make any sense. No, no, no. But see, the thing is, it's including Wi-Fi. So even while I'm on Wi-Fi. Oh, okay, okay that... so you're probably streaming at home or something. Why would I stream at home? Or like here, I don't know. Why would I stream here? I don't know Netflix or something. I don't. Why would I use gigs. my? I'm not Zane. I don't use my phone for Netflix. I, I used it. Okay, to be fair, I used it at the airport while waiting for a flight because it was delayed. That's the only reason <laughs> I had Netflix. All right, all right. I give you that one. I no, give but you that Pokemon one. Go so far for me has only used like 40 megs since its launch. So, honestly, it doesn't use that much. But for people who do think it's taking up a lot, T-Mobile in the states has actually offered free Pokemon Go data to all their T-Mobile users. All right, here you go. That Five, is amazing. 105.04 gigabytes. That is ridiculous. Okay, whatever. But let's move on. I want my internet <laughs> provider to do that for me, too. What the heck, man? And the best part is, I'm on wind. The wind's terrible. You have oh, no that's service. that's why you're using anymore. so much data. You do have unlimited data. Yeah. No, I don't. I never got that plan. Oh, why are you on wind? Okay, let's move on. Let's move on, guys. So, the NES console. Everyone has been, like, becoming a hipster, trying to find old NES consoles. Yeah, buying people are it. going bananas over it. So, Nintendo is actually re-releasing the NES in a micro version. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. And it's going to be 60 USD, and it includes 30 games built in. Once again, I still don't like that. <laughs> I loved being able to plug my cartridge in. Like, that was it. before N64, that was my original cartridge blower. So pull it out, blow on it, hope it works. Every yeah, you, you time. gotta do that. You gotta do the. <laughs> and then stick it back in, click it down, and hope for the best. <laughs> it was an experience, man. It was a real life struggle back then. I remember I had Duck Hunt, Super Mario, and Teenage Ninja Turtles. Those were the three main games I played. T oh, Teenage what? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. I, I, I said it with a lisp. I said it with a lisp. Because I went back to my childhood for a second. I was like, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a fun game. I remember playing that one a lot, too. It was, it was dope. But speaking of Nintendo... Okay, so Ubisoft is actually the first company to finally tell us about the NX. But oh. they didn't tell us much. Okay. Since they've been developing games for it, they're saying that this is going to be the next-gen console. This is going to be the next big thing because it's going to bring in casual gamers just like the Wii did and just like the first DS did. And that's all they really told us. So I'm guessing that this is going to be sort of like mobile games and Pokemon Go since it is a console that you plug in at home and then you can take out and go out into the streets and continue playing. So I don't know. That is intriguing. I don't that's, know. Ubisoft. That's an interesting concept, yeah. The question is, how is it going to compete with Pokemon Go? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to be on it since Nintendo. Yeah, that's true. Probably. And kids already don't have cell phones, so they need a way of playing it. Actually, it's. I was walking down the street the other day, and I see the kid playing Pokemon Go on a tablet. Yeah. Um, I know my, my girlfriend actually like took her nephew out, and she had to tether internet to her nephew. Because, yeah. So I'm guessing that's what they're doing for their kids. They're t all tethering. There was data. like six kids around a dad, and <laughs> I think they were tethered. I don't know, because I think maybe all the iPads were connected to battery packs, because there was like six cables <laughs> run into the dude's pockets. Oh, my God. And I think he was using the cables as like leashes to keep the kids in but still give them enough space to to pokemon i'm so mad at you for not taking a picture of this 
This I is wish, gold. I wish I, I wish I did. It was really weird, and I felt weird because I was like, I can't take a picture of kids, but this is this is amazing. This man looks like a squid with like eight tentacles. I'm, I'm so glad you did not take a picture of kids <laughs> that are not yours. Yeah, that would have been pretty bad. <laughs> or kids you know. <laughs> but it was still priceless. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. I can't. But anyways, for those of you who liked Pokemon Go, Saturday it was taken down by a company called Poodle Corp. It's a hacker group that DDoSes games because... They have nothing better to do. I know. It's, it's really stupid. So they're actually planning on DDoSing again on August 1st and keeping it out for 20 hours. Why? You know the worst part? Yeah, and it answers Zane's question right there is, when asked why they would do this, they said, because we can and nobody can stop us. And they don't play it. I was like, so what if you don't play it? What's Why are you, you know, ruining other You know what that fun? is? That's haterade right there. That is straight haterade right there, man. That is some mad, mad, mad haterade. And you know what I got to say to that? Zane's like, oh my gosh, he's going to use it. Here we go. I'm going to use it because these guys deserve this. Let's all bend together and make sure that this doesn't happen. Right, guys? Say right. Say right. Right, right. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I had to use it. Three horn salute to all my Pokemon Go community. All of Toronto. We need to band together and make sure this doesn't happen. How long have you been waiting to use that? I'll show. I'll, I'll, I'll episode, to be honest. <laughs> Let's just look for an opening. Can I, can I use it one more time? You know what? Let's call it again. Call Pokemon it again, Go. Babe. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I know you make it sound real exciting and stuff. Like there's a call to action there. I know, right? Can actually do something when really they're going to be shut out for 20 hours and that's it. <laughs> it's happening one way or another. I'm I'm sure. Oh my goodness! It's gonna be Curse terrible. you, Poodle Corp. <laughs> poodle Corp. That's such a weird name too. Yeah, and their picture is like three poodles coming out of a cake or something. At also, least anonymous is kind of cool. Yeah, they have the V for Vendetta thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, these guys, Poodle Corp. I think they have a poodle. Yeah, they have three poodles. Three three poodles. <laughs> Y'all are lame, Poodle Corp. I'm going to find you. You're the most innocent looking dog, like one of the most hated brands now. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to sick Annie on you. That's what? right. I'm going to sick my dog on you, Poodle Corp. <laughs> your dog's tiny. They're going to lock you out of your bank account. <laughs> have you ever actually seen Annie, though? It's a pug, JRT. Annie will, like, Annie will demolish your dog. And big dogs are scared of Annie because she's a bully. She doesn't like big dogs. Well, it's a JRT. It is they a JRT. Every, well, that's all small dogs. All small dogs think they're, like, bigger than everything else. That's a JR. That's a Jack, Ru Jack Russell Terrier thing. That's any small dogs. That's I don't know. Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas Ta shiver. But you're, you're, Tash is not like that. I can't believe we're getting into conversations yeah, let's, about let's, dogs. Yeah, let's not get into dogs. Let's speak about Razor, the gaming company. So those of you who don't know, Ga Razer is the company that makes keyboards, mice, mouse pads, controllers. Okay, anyways. They're actually planning to make a program called, well, an app called Razer Go. And this hooks up to Pokemon Go, and it sets up beacons around you where you can connect to other people playing Pokemon Go and chat with them. So you'll find people of the, your team colors, and you can, like, coordinate to take down gyms or move on and, like, make friends, catch Pokemon together, ask questions... I thought it was a really cool idea. That is a pretty cool idea. Although, in some experiences I've heard, uh, if you want to talk to someone, you just go, hey, hey, <laughs> get away. It's or you could do what one company did and turn Pokemon Go into a dating app. Oh, no, don't do that. There's a company that's already starting it. I think they're calling it Pokedating or something. That actually sounds and they're, kind they're of they're starting to Yeah, they're starting to match uh, Pokemon trainers. And rather than send them on dates, they're sending them on, like, go and catch Pokemon together, meet up at this spot, at this Pokestop, and spend time together and talk. Are the two people on the same team? I have no team? idea. I refuse to look into it because I was like, this is ridiculous. That actually isn't the worst idea, though, considering, like, you could really make a lot of things social out of this. I mean, this is forcing people to walk outside now. It is a worse idea than having speed dating at Fan Expo, all right? I've never heard of a single person who ended up creating a relationship from speed dating at Fan Expo. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, I'll give you that one. But this one actually requires you to walk outside common locations, things like that. And it's not like your Pokestops are in abandoned places. I mean, maybe some of them are, but a lot of public spaces, benches, parks, things like that. So it is a good way to meet people if you really, really were desperate to. Wait, speaking of speed dating at Fan Expo, let's go back into our generals thing. Men have to pay for that. <laughs> Women don't. 
<laughs> what is this? I know. I think Sass and I were going to try it last year just for, for shoots and giggles. And it was 30 bucks. Was, was it 30 like, or was it 50? It was 30. It was an insane amount is what it was. I thought it was so stupid. I'm like, just because I'm a guy? That's so dumb. I know. I hated it. But You did it? No, I hated oh. it. <laughs> oh. Like, I don't want to do it. I was like, my first thought was, how dare he do it without telling me? <laughs> you were going to go to. You and I were going to do it together. <laughs> I couldn't even find you that day. Yeah, that's true. I think I found you at the end. Yeah, that was after, like, I went and saw everything. I had, like, no time to do anything. I went on the Sunday. Oh, my goodness. It's terrible. This time I'm going to go all weekend. So has that been Tech Talk? That has been Tech Talk. That's been Tech Talk, guys. That was that was a very productive or unproductive Tech Talk. That was a very different Tech Talk from what we usually do. Yeah, less Pokemon. It's true. I'm trying to keep out the Pokemon, but that's really all the news that's happening right now. Yo, shout out to Pokemon one time. <laughs> I had to do it. I that, had to do it. I, that was appropriate. I'll give you that one. <laughs> oh, goodness. This is just terrible. I love it. But we'll be back, guys. That's been Tech Talk. Productive Tech Talk. I think so, at least. We'll be back after this commercial break, guys. Stay tuned with Zane telling us what's going on in the city. Keep it locked. Urban, urban definition. definition on CHHA 1610. This is Urban Definition. Welcome back to Urban Definition. Now it's Zane's segment. All right, guys, as you know, every at the end of uh, every show, we talk about what's happening this weekend in Toronto. So let's start with what's happening first this weekend in Toronto. For those of you who don't know or no, I don't even know why I was starting with that. <laughs> it's Way, way Home Way to go, Festival. buddy. Way to go. I know, right? I completely messed that one up. <laughs> uh, it, it's Way Home Festival this weekend, and it starts on Friday, and it's at Burles Creek Park, which is just a little bit outside of Barrie. And for those of you who don't know, Way Home Festival is an EDM fest, or actually just a music festival. Uh, a lot of good talent coming out there, so if you have tickets, you know, definitely go. Try EDM to make it stands for Electronic Dance Music. Just saying. I didn't know that for a very long time. Actually, it's not just EDM, though. It's actually um, a bunch of other acts. As far as I I heard, the Killers are going to be there this year. Oh! Yeah, Mr. Brightside. That's, okay, maybe not Mr. Brightside, but, I mean, Bones, Human, maybe not. I'm not a big fan of Mr. Brightside. It's all right. I, it's the most popular song. I get that, but I, I like, Sass is going to get on me, too. I'm a fan of, of the Killers! <laughs> no. Stop. I am You're not a fan of everything. You can only be a fan of something. I'm a diverse individual. Wait, Leave can't me alone. you be a fan of everything? We'll get into that after. <laughs> we'll get into that after. Um, we also have the 7th Annual Unity Festival that starts this Friday, and it's at Super Wonder Gallery, and it celebrates hip-hop diversity. Cream, you got more on that one? All I got to say right now is the, the moment you mentioned that, I was like, Unity! James, uh, Rick James? Rick James, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> oh, man, just madness. Do you know anyone who's going to that or anyone who's part of it? There's a, okay, there's a lot that's going on for this festival, and what I'm a little bit confused with, maybe our listeners can correct me, I don't remember Carabana being in July. I was always under the impression that Carabana took place during the CNE times, which was in August. You mean, like, late August? Maybe not. But... No, it always happened uh, around the Civic Holiday, like the last weekend of July or the first weekend of August. Really? Like yeah, that that weekend, of course. But um, yeah, around the Civic Holiday. Maybe my I don't. I've just been so, <coughs> just I, I'm so confused by this, because well, for first of all, Sassin, you were supposed to create a Facebook group because Sassin, for those of you who don't know, is dating a Trini. By the way, happy birthday, Trini. <laughs> Big shout out to you. One more time. Three horns salute for your birthday. She's not even listening. She's out at dinner. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Either way, happy birthday to her if she does manage to listen to the recording after the show, which is uploaded onto YouTube. So, yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. She will forever be wishing, wished happy birthday on that. But either way, <laughs> the story was, uh, Sasson, you were supposed to create a Facebook um, group <laughs> For our um, festivities, and now I'm realizing that that is probably not going to happen because <laughs> it's like next weekend now. Is it actually? Yeah, it's next yeah. weekend. Oh my gosh! Caravan is going to be held next weekend as well, and that's what we're going to talk about next week on <laughs> Urban Definition. Well, I mean, I don't know. But, oh, oh yeah, because this might be well. Last year was my first year taking you, Zane. 
No, it was the second time we went. Oh, was it your girlfriend's first time? Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So last year was the first time we took her. This year is going to be the first time that I'm taking, well, Sasson to What's any. What's with you taking people's girlfriends to this thing? No, that has sounded really <laughs> weird. All right. You yeah, went hold there. on a second, Zach. <laughs> you went you didn't there. Take her. I took her. We went with Kareem because Kareem has his connections to the community. Okay, fine. The events going on. We jumped the fence. It was fabulous. It was. You should not be saying that on air. Why? It's true. Everybody, like, it's it's such a common thing at this point. It doesn't matter who you are. You're j- when, Listen, I'm going to say this in the most Caribbean accent I can. When you go into Caribana, you have to jump the fence. You ain't, you ain't Caribbean if you ain't jumping no fence, yes? <laughs> I'm telling you. But, yes, if you are not <coughs> going to be able to make it to the festivities next week, there is, as Zane was saying, a number of different activities that are going on throughout the city. Um, the first one is that I know of is taking place tomorrow. And it's called um, the Mindful Workshop, which is a full-day workshop. Um, and it's organized by CAMH. And it tackles mindful living in, Afri- in African and Caribbean communities in Toronto. So I will, I'm going to do my best to, to hit that one up. It's going to be sick. Um, another one is the Toronto Carnival Run, which is on the 23rd. And that's going to be um, on Martin Goodman Trail in the West End. And it's a 1K uh, children's race. So that's definitely going to be family-oriented and a lot of fun. Um, there's the Black Canadian Women's Awards, which is at 100 Finch West on July the 24th. Uh, tickets for that are 80 bucks, I believe. So, I mean, i got to dig deep in my wallet for that one. That might be a little bit um, steep for me at the moment. But... Um, the one that I will definitely be hitting, and I'm hoping that this is going to be our redemption assassin, because I am more than likely going to be dragging you to this, is the Taste of the Caribbean, which is an opportunity to learn about Caribbean culture through its food, dance, and craft. It's a free event for all ages, and it'll be hosted by the Toronto Public Library, which is pretty dope. Um, for more, That's going to take place on um, July 26th from 2 to 3 p.m., so it's not a very long um, event, and it's going to be at 20 Covington. For more information on all of these events that are going on, um, I will post them all up on UD's Facebook page, but it is it was originally published on Now Magazine, and I feel like this show we've actually shouted out Now Magazine quite a bit. But, I mean, really and truly, at the end of the day, Now Magazine is a great resource to learn about what is going on in our city. Yeah, definitely. Um, and in addition to what Kareem was saying, there's also the night market at David Picot Square, oh, which yeah. is uh, nightly until Saturday, and it has Caribbean-themed food and runs in conjunction with the Toronto Caribbean Carnival. So uh, definitely check that out. Uh, we also have Indie Fridays at Young and Dundas Square. Uh, this week, I believe, is Radio Radio with special guests and I for, pr- please forgive me if I pronounce this incorrectly, Herencia de Tembiki. I think you're forgiven. But you are African, so I'm a little bit disappointed. I don't know if that's an African name, though. That's the thing. And that, that's a very general thing to say, too. Uh, there's also a festival of beer at Exhibition Place, which I walked by today, and, man, it was just, like, fenced and tents everywhere. Like, yeah, you got to go check it out. Over 300 kinds of beer from 100 different, 100 and more local producers. You also have the Rogers Cup, which starts on Saturday up until next Saturday, July 31st, at the Aviva Center. Uh, sorry, next till next Sunday, I should say, July 31st, at the Aviva Center, formerly, formerly the Rexall Center. And come and check it out for real if you can afford tickets. I mean, some big ticket names did drop out, but you still got Canadian Milos Ronich, who is going to be there. And he's a big deal now because he made it to the finals of Wimbledon. And if anyone, if anyone was watching tennis... Like in the last five, six years, like this guy's really been on the come up. So, you know, way to go, Canadian talent. Go support it. Go support the Rogers Cup and make sure these big ticket names come out next year. On a side note for Raonic, um, he actually has decided not to play in the Rio Olympics this year. But we'll save that topic for another week mm-hmm. because there's a lot of there's a lot of athletes that are bowing out of the Olympics. I just got tagged in a post and I feel like it's most um, it applies perfectly to Sasson. And it says this, and it was posted by a a gentleman by Terry Blass on Twitter. And he said, if you're sick about hearing about Pokemon Go for the past week, let me tell you, this is what this is what it's like hearing about sports for the past three decades. (laughs) That's so true. Yeah, I can see why Sasson would like that one, too. Look at him laughing. I saw that and I was like, that is, that is, I have to share that with Sasson. No, but speaking of Pokemon Go, I'm really disappointed by Zane's list. 
He forgot to mention Pokemon Go's second launch party happening in Toronto. I didn't even know there was a second launch party happening. I invited him too. You did? <laughs> so I, I got your face. invite for the first one. Is it the one that the you and I are going to this Friday? Yeah, it's this uh -huh. Friday, 5 p.m. till midnight at the CN Tower. So everyone be there, get some Dragonites. It'll be a blast. Some Dragonites. Yes, I'm some aiming Dragonite. for one. <laughs> I know, right? So let me tell you what Sassan and I, how much of, of losers Sassan and I are. We are meeting on Friday at Dundas Square. From Dundas Square, we're going to walk to the CN Tower. From the CN Tower, we're going to walk to Harbor Front. From Harbor Front, we're going to walk back to Dundas Square. And then from Dundas Square, we're going to drive home. You know what? Maybe I'll see you guys there, actually, because I got like four different birthday parties this weekend, and one's in downtown on Friday. <laughs> I highly doubt you'll see us because we're going to be men with no lives. But no, he can call us and find us. We're going to be on our phones. Oh, my God. Everyone's <laughs> going to be on their phones. Is it bad for a moment? I forgot that we could actually make phone calls on our phones. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm going to be playing Pokemon. And I was like, all right, and it's a phone. <laughs> but, yeah, as we usually say, guys, you know, have a fun and safe weekend. Um, Zane, are you doing anything cool? Zane's going to birthday parties. I got literally just birthdays lined up. I got a two-year-old's birthday party. A nine-year-old's birthday party, a 29-year-old's birthday party, and I don't even know the other one. So Zane has a social life. Sasson, are you doing anything big? Probably going to Niagara. <laughs> girlfriend's birthday. Sasson is so random. <laughs> he's, he's busy this weekend, man. It's a girlfriend's birthday. You don't want to mess that up. Yeah. And I'm doing Pokemon and working on a pilot episode for a TV show. So it'll be a pretty dope weekend for all of us. Guys, be safe. Don't drink and drive. And I guess I now have to add this to my list. Please, please, please do not... Pokemon and drive. Please do not Pokemon and bike. And just be safe, guys. Goodbye. Have a good weekend. Say H -A -H -A. This is Urban Definition.